Coming up on episode 14 of the Keto Camp podcast, we discuss the relationship between fasting, autophagy, and cancer. Think of it this way. We're made up of trillions of cells and up to 70 billion every single day need to be recycled. Autophagy is that process that's turned on in the body which recycles the damaged cells. So if we're not getting this process going of autophagy, what happens? We get cancer, we get disease, bad things start to happen. If you were to complete a seven day water only fast once per year, you would reduce your chances of any cancer by 95%. I'm a certified functional health practitioner who's on a mission to educate 1 billion people. I've been obese for most of my life. From rock bottom to the top of the mountain, I am passionate about studying ancient healing strategies like fasting and the ketogenic diet and curating this information on the Keto Camp podcast. My goal is to bring you the thought leaders in this space. My name is Ben Azadi, and I want to thank you for spending part of your day with me. In this episode of the Keto Camp podcast, you're going to learn a lot about this fancy word, I like to call it, autophagy. If you've been following fasting and keto, you probably came across this word autophagy, and we're going to dig deep into this process, this amazing process in the human body and ways to turn on that switch, which actually turns off bad genes and it gets rid of precancerous cells that might turn cancerous. And we're going to relate that to the ketogenic diet. We're going to relate it to fasting and also exercise. And this is piggybacking off of the episode we did earlier this week with Dr. Nasha Winters. And that episode was all about cancer, using the ketogenic diet for cancer. And if you didn't listen to that episode, definitely go give it a listen. It was episode number 12 with Dr. Nasha Winters, who is a world leader in cancer research. She wrote the book, The Metabolic Approach to Cancer. So I'm going to dig a little bit deeper into what she was talking about. She was talking about eating too frequently and how that's a problem and it leads to disease. It could lead to cancer. She broke down a lot of cancer myths. So I'm going to dig deeper into that conversation and you're going to feel empowered by the end of this episode. Before I get into this episode, I ask you to please rate and review the Keto Camp podcast. If you haven't done so already, it makes a big difference with the show. And if you got any value from it, I would really appreciate that. Also, make sure you take a screenshot of any of these episodes and post it on your Instagram stories. If you do that, I will, and then you tag me, my handle is at the Benazadi. That's T-H-E-B-E-N-A-Z-A-D-I. I'll see that tag and I'll reshare it on my story and we'll get some other people following you back. So go ahead and screenshot it, take a picture on your phone and put that on your story or even on your Instagram profile, whatever you want. Just make sure you tag me and I'll be sure to share that. This podcast episode is sponsored by the world's healthiest keto coffee, which comes from Purity Coffee Beans. If you want to get the highest antioxidant bag of beans delivered to your door, go to www.ketocampcoffee.com and get your beans on. So let's get into this episode all about fasting, autophagy, and cancer. So what the heck is autophagy? Autophagy stands for self-eating autophagy, self-eating. Your body is literally eating itself. Sounds disgusting, but it's really cool and actually an amazing process that our creator designed within the human body. The way that I describe autophagy is the tearing down. Think of it this way. We're made up of trillions of cells, 70 trillion cells in the human body, and up to 70 billion every single day need to be recycled. Autophagy is that process that's turned on in the body, which recycles the damage cells. So picture this refrigerator you have in your kitchen. It has groceries in that refrigerator, which all have an expiration date. Now what will happen if you let all the groceries in your refrigerator expire, but instead of taking those expired groceries and throwing them into the trash, you just kind of push them towards the back of your refrigerator, close the door, drive to the grocery store, buy fresh new groceries, come back home, 
open that refrigerator door, and you place those fresh new groceries in front of the old expired ones and then close that door again. What will happen? That's going to be a toxic environment. Mold, bacteria, disease, it is not going to look pretty. Well, guess what? The human body is like that refrigerator. The human body requires 70 billion cells every day that need to be thrown out out of that refrigerator. So if we're not getting this process going of autophagy, what happens? We get cancer. We get disease. Bad things start to happen. This is why one of the world leaders in cancer research, Dr. Thomas Seafried, who wrote the book Cancer as a Metabolic Disease, here's a quote from him. If you were to complete a seven-day water-only fast once per year, you would reduce your chances of any cancer by 95%. Okay, why does he say that? Because when you practice fasting, that switch gets turned on. That autophagy switch gets turned on. On. The body is so stinking smart. It is so intelligent. The creator who designed us knew what he was doing. When we are not eating food, the body needs to get energy from somewhere. So this autophagy switch is turned on, and the body's going to seek out damaged cells, damaged protein, damaged mitochondria. It's going to use that for fuel first, the bad stuff first. Think of the ship that's going through the Atlantic Ocean with 100 passengers, and they're entering a big storm. And they're taking on all this water and they're starting to sink. So let's relate that to fasting. It's an acute stressor to the body and the body perceives that as a stressful event. So this ship is going through the ocean. It's taking on all this water. What's going to happen? The captain is going to order all of the crew members to go and seek out cargo that is least important. Cargo that we could get rid of. And they're going to dump that off of the ship so they could get through that storm. The body does the same thing. When it goes through a stressor like fasting, it's a healthy stressor, a hormetic stressor, it's going to dump the cargo that is least important from the body. And guess what? That cargo, it's precancerous cells that could turn into cancerous cells if you don't do something about it. That's why autophagy is so stinking powerful. Now, we don't want too much autophagy the same way we don't want too much of something called mTOR. So let's break that down. Let's unpack that real quick in case you don't know these uh, two pathways. When it comes to the human body, there are two pathways. Either we're in a growth phase, an anabolic phase called mTOR, which which stands for mechanistic target of rapamycin. You eat food, you eat calories, you eat protein, and you're in a growth phase. You activate mTOR. When mTOR is activated, autophagy is bye-bye, gone. So when you are not eating food, like when you're fasting, then mTOR is gone, and what goes up, what gets activated, autophagy. They have an inverted relationship. I always like to compare mTOR to being uh, like a bodybuilder, Arnold Schwarzenegger. So think of mTOR as Arnold. Whenever you hear mTOR, think Arnold, think growth. There is a problem with too much mTOR. mTOR is not the bad guy at all. We, We like spurts of mTOR, but if you're constantly in a growth phase, like you're eating every two to three hours like bodybuilders do, and bodybuilders might not like this comment, but here's the deal. I have a question. Why do bodybuilders live only on average to 58 years old, which is about 14 years younger than the average person? Why are they dying sooner than other people? Because they're eating every two to three hours. They're eating high protein. They're always in this mTOR growth anabolic state. And what happens, we get these cells that are damaged, remember those expired groceries, and they start duplicating and duplicating and spreading, and big problems start to occur. So mTOR is great, but we don't want too much mTOR. Autophagy is great, but we don't want too much autophagy because autophagy is catabolic. And when you do it specifically or strategically, I should say, it's healthy because it's going to be catabolic towards the bad cells. But if you're doing too much fasting, if you're doing too much exercise, which by the way also activates autophagy, then you're going to be breaking down some of the good stuff. You're going to be breaking down some of the good protein, and you don't want that. So there's an art here between autophagy and mTOR, and that's exactly what I teach my Keto Camp Inner Circle members. I teach them the art of these two pathways. The human body is designed for feast-famine cycles. Feast-famine, what does that mean? Feasting means you're eating. You're activating mTOR. Famine means you're fasting, you're activating autophagy. So if you could master these feast famine cycles, your DNA is going to start turning off bad genes and turning on healthy, vibrant, longevity genes. Because genes are not our future. 
we have 97% control over the expression of our genes. Yeah, the genes we're born with, it's true. We cannot change our genes. However, we change, we can control the expression of those genes. The genes that we're born with are the bullets that load the gun. We determine whether or not we pull the trigger on that gun. And this is called epigenetics. And according to the work of Dr. Bruce Lipton, 97% is under our control. It's our environment. It's even our thoughts. It's the food that we eat, meaning only 3% of all disease is strictly genetics. Wow, you want to talk about a freaking paradigm shift? That is a major one. And that gives you your destiny back. Because just because cancer runs in your family does not mean you're doomed for cancer or diabetes or heart disease or whatever it is, you have control. Keto is a very powerful way to downregulate inflammation. And when you downregulate inflammation, it reduces inflammation around your cell membrane and that communicates to your DNA to turn off the bad genes. So keto is powerful. Fasting, powerful. Autophagy, powerful. Autophagy is like Pac-Man going through your body, eating up damaged cells and rebuilding healthier cells. That's the entire regeneration process. We got to tear down before we build up. If you think, and this is an example that Dr. Jason Fung has given in his lectures, when you look at a, a old kitchen, let's say you're in a 1970s home and they have these nasty like lime avocado green kitchen countertops and you want to rebuild new countertops. Are you just going to buy new countertops and just place them on the old lime green? No, you tear down and then you build up. That's what your body's doing with autophagy. So you're probably wondering, how do I get more of this autophagy? Fasting, definitely, you'll get it. it and it depends. And Dr. Nation Winters talked about this on episode number 12. It depends on the person to what point they start activating autophagy. For one person, it could be 12 hours into a fast and they're getting this autophagy. Another person might be 24 hours. It really depends on how overweight they are, how much inflammation they have, and just their, their health history. I would say, give you a, just a, a general answer here, at around the 16-hour mark, most people should be getting autophagy. Uh, and when I say 16-hour mark, I mean 16 hours fasting. However, you don't have to only get it through fasting. There's other ways, and I'm going to share with you some other ways to incorporate, some other things to incorporate so you could get some autophagy. But before I do, I made that comment earlier in this episode about Dr. Tom Seafried and how he said you could reverse your chances of any cancer by 95%. What does he mean by that? Well, he saw in his, in clinically, he sees something called maximum autophagy. He's actually seen tumors shrink before his eyes during these block fasts. So did Dr. Pompa. He, and he talked about that on episode one of the Keto Camp podcast. What happens is when you achieve max autophagy, and I'm going to explain how to test for that, that's when tumor, sh tumor, cancerous tumor cells, and they start to shrink and shrink and shrink because they can't survive at that in that environment. So here's how you do it. Here's how you test. And I teach this to my Keto Camp Inner Circle members, which by the way, I'd love if you're serious about learning all this stuff and you love it just like me and you want to get coaching from me, then go to ketocamp.com. That's camp with a K. And consider joining my inner circle. I'd love to teach you all this stuff more extensively and you could be a part of amazing an amazing community. That was just a side note, but let's get back to this. So here's how you test for max autophagy. You take your ketones and your glucose, your blood glucose and your blood ketones, and you can use a machine like Keto Mojo. I like Keto Mojo. And you take your glucose and you divide it by 18 and you compare that to your ketones. And if you could get a one-to-one -one ratio, you are in max autophagy. So let's unpack that a little bit because you might be confused. Let's say you're on a four-day water fast right now. And you test your glucose, your blood glucose with your Keto Mojo, and it is 61. You're going to take 61. You're going to divide that by 18, which gives you 3.3. And then you test your blood ketones, and your ketones are 3.8. Well, you achieved maximum autophagy because you are a higher than a one-to-one -one ratio. Did that make sense? So you take your glucose, divide it by 18, and then you get your ketones, and you want to get a one-to-one -one ratio or better. And if you do, if you see that, you are in maximum autophagy. This is why I throw in a block fast every year for myself, and I, and I have my Beyond Fasting program, which, which teaches that. So I highly recommend you check out some more of uh, Dr. Thomas Seafried's work. Go read his book, Cancer as a uh, Metabolic Disease. It's a little bit a difficult read. If you know the science, if you like that stuff, you would really enjoy that book. Also, a side note before I get into the foods that increase autophagy, you could also get three times the autophagy by dry fasting. And Dr. Pompa talked about this on episode number one of the Keto Camp podcast. You get three times the autophagy with dry fasting. Dry fasting means no water. 
just air. <laughs> so essentially, a 24-hour dry fast is equivalent to a three-day water fast. You're going to see more ketones go up and your glucose go down. It's an extreme way to do it, so make sure you know what you're doing. You're working with a professional to kind of guide you through it, but that's just uh, a fact for you. So here are some foods, other ways to increase autophagy besides fasting. Exercise. Exercise is a great way to increase autophagy. Doing some high-intensity exercise, uh, 30 minutes or so, would be a good way to do it, maybe four to five times a week. My, my friend Mike Mutzel, who is the host of the High Intensity Health Podcast and also High Intensity Health on YouTube, he has a lot of information about exercise and autophagy. Go check him out. He's an awesome dude. He's putting out a lot of great information. So you could go and check him out to learn more about autophagy and exercise. Here are some other ways to increase autophagy. Green tea. Green tea is a great way. It's been shown to increase autophagy. Coffee, right? Coffee. This show is sponsored by Purity Coffee. So get your highest quality coffee beans at ketocampcoffee.com. Olive oil, extra virgin, real olive oil. I get mine from the fresh pressed olive oil club. You could learn more at ketocampoliveoil.com. Coconuts also help. So coconut MCT oil, put that in your coffee. So that's double the bang for your buck because you get the coffee and the MCT oil. Turmeric also has been shown to increase autophagy. Ginger, sulforaphane, which you could find in broccoli sprouts. Mushroom, so mushroom coffee. I like Four Sigmatic mushroom coffee. So all these things are ways for you to get additional autophagy. And if you want to watch a video I did all about fasting and autophagy, uh, go to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash ketocamp, and the video is called Fasting and Autophagy, Everything You Need to Know. I will also put that in the notes of this podcast. I hope that was helpful for you. I, I want you to really understand here that you are in control of your genes, of your future. Let's be proactive here, not reactive. Einstein said it best. Here's my favorite quote. You always hear me say it. Intellectuals solve problems. Geniuses prevent them. My goal with this podcast is to empower you to know, to understand, to have the awareness that you are a genius. So get your autophagy on, just not too much, (laughs) and get your mTOR on, just not too much. So follow these feast famine cycles. If you want to learn more about this, definitely go to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash ketocamp. Check out the resources in the notes of this podcast episode and let me know what your biggest takeaway was from this episode. I'd love to get an email from you or a screen share, or I should say a screenshot and a share on your Instagram story. Uh, Let me know. So my email is ben at ketocamp.com and my Instagram handle is at thebenazadi if you want to take a screenshot and share that on your story. If you haven't rated and reviewed the Keto Camp podcast, please do so. It'll help get this message out to the world. We are the exclusive podcast for all things ketogenic diet, fasting, longevity, and performance. We're releasing three brand new episodes on the Keto Camp podcast every single week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. We're getting the world leaders, the thought leaders in this space, and I'm interviewing them for you so you could benefit and get this information because I know it'll make a big difference in your life. Share it with a friend. Go get your Keto Camp coffee on by going to ketocampcoffee.com. And if you haven't claimed my free Keto Kickstart guide, I have a 12-page ebook where I explain four ways to burn fat instead of sugar. I have a keto meal plan in there. I talk about fasting. I talk about this feast, famine, cycling, autophagy, and so much more. You can get that for free over at www.ketokickstartguide.com. Thank you so much for listening to this episode and spending part of your day with me. You will hear me on the next episode, friends. This podcast is for information purposes only. Statements and views expressed on this podcast are not medical advice. This podcast, including Benazadi, disclaim responsibility from any possible adverse effects from the use of information contained herein. Opinions of guests are their own, and this podcast does not accept responsibility of statements made by guests. This podcast does not make any representations or warranties about guest qualifications or credibility. Individuals on this podcast may have a direct or non-direct interest in products or services referred to herein. If you think you have a medical problem, consult a licensed physician.